right into this. We're going to hop right into this word. We're going to hop right into it. I mean, I'm, 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 I'm on. If you need a Bible, slip your hands up, up and uh, the ushers can bring you one. Uh, we want to make sure that you can follow along with us as we peruse through the word of God. Amen. Elder Lamont's preached the paint off the walls last week. Yeah. I tell you right now, when you open your mouth and start talking about that word, I suck it up like a Kirby vacuum cleaner. Anybody who stand up there, Nikki, Minister Jonas doing the offering, anybody, you, you popping that word, I'm telling you, I receive from the word of God. Why? I know that faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. And I never get to the point where my ears are so full that I can't hear nobody preaching the word of God. Amen. 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 Now, we've been talking about the love of God and the importance of us understanding the great revelation. What is that? That God loves us. Amen. As I was preparing today, I said, you know what? I'm not the kind of guy. I said, God, I'm glad I'm not the kind of guy who hears the grace message and want to take advantage of everything. <laughs> hear the grace message and just want, don't want nobody speaking to my life. You know, hear the grace message and I'm just going to do what I want to do because it's under the grace. I said, I'm so glad I'm not like that when it comes to your word, God. Amen. I said, the grace message and your love provokes me to live more holier, to be more open to the voice of God. Do you hear what I'm saying? You want to be more open to the voice of God because God loves you. He cherishes you. His arms are not so short that he can't reach down and pull you out of the pit and set you on high. But if you don't have a revelation of God's love, you'll try to work for God. Amen. You'll try to do special things to get God to move. And God has already moved. Amen. God has already done all he's going to do. You, the word says he won't leave us. He won't forsake us. So why do we get in so much turmoil in life as it pertains to this word, love? I'm convinced you cannot love anyone if you have no revelation of God's love for you. Amen. Why? Because if you ha don't have that revelation, you will manipulate love. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> Do you hear what I'm saying? Yes, You'll manipulate people to love you because, number one, you haven't allowed God's love to deal with your abandonment, Amen. with your hurt, Amen. with your c conniving and, and all this kind of stuff. So, therefore, you become a, 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 a manipulator of people to get them to love you. Amen. But once you get a revelation of God's love for you, once you get a revelation of that, you can properly love yourself and you can properly love others. Amen? Amen. So we're going to hit it tonight, man. We're going to get in. I'm going to read you something God told me. And I know he told me that. I think I told my wife this. I don't know, but I know it was God. Now, I don't say that all the time. Just like I said Sunday, I've never used the phrase, don't judge me, to anyone. Don't judge me. Why y'all judging me? I never even used that phrase. Again, I... I just don't live my Christian life like that because I'm surrounded by people that if you say that you feel God is, or, or, or hey, you may want to go left, Derek, or you may want to go right, you may want to pause on that, I'm surrounded by those people. Guess what I do? I, I take caution. I don't live my life like I know everything. Amen? Amen. I put on uh, Facebook yesterday, always have a healthy skepticism Amen. of your own thoughts ideas, and beliefs. Yes, because when you have that, you can avoid a lot of violated wisdom. So, man, I got this idea, I got this thing going, da, 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 but b -b 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 I'm excited about it, but I have a healthy dose of skepticism of my own ideas. Amen. And I'm waiting for somebody to say, have you thought about this? Have you considered this? Have you looked over here at this now? Now, I don't know about this. And as long as I have a healthy dose of skepticism, you know what I do? I pause and I listen to what you got to say. But when you don't have that, can't nobody tell you nothing. <laughs> and God dealt with me today. Listen to this. <clears throat> and we're going to hop in this thing. <sighs> I'm coming. You have any visitors, uh, Sister Nikki? Okay, cool. We, we, we saw family in the night. I'm just going to share this with you. <clears throat> in my hearing from God, in my hearing from God, 
it is never so clear. In my hearing from God, it is never so clear that I can't hear from, number one, my wife. That I can't hear from my wife's thoughts or your husband's thoughts about the matter. It is never so clear that I can't hear from my spiritual father. I don't hear that clear. It is never so clear that I can't hear from my covenant friends. I don't hear that clear. <laughs> this is God dealing with me today. And he was saying, be careful how you hear with perfection or your perceived perfection. He said, if there's tension, he said, if there's tension with you and your wife, I will never endorse your anointing over your agreement with her. Now, I know some guys who just tell their wife, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm doing this, and that's just the bottom line. It's like God told me to do this, and God told me to do that. Over agreement with your wife, that's not God, that's you. Amen. God doesn't create division. And here it is again. He said, Derek, I want you to always to avoid dismantling dignity in the pulpit. <laughs> dignity of what? My word. Don't stand in that pulpit and dismantle it now. Always avoid dismantling dignity in the pulpit. And I, I go as far as saying, as far as saying this. Always avoid dismantling God's witness in the eyes of people. Amen. Do you hear what I just said? Amen. On your job, <laughs> in your relationships. Amen. See, it goes back to what I said. When you're selfish, you hear what I just said? You say, nope, I'm going to love this man anyway. Yeah, but are you doing it right? Nope. No, I'm doing it like I want to do it. Are you doing it according to the word? No, I'm doing it. i tell you what you're doing. You are dismantling God's witness in that man's eyes. Amen. And guess what it's going to do? It's going to turn on you. Amen. Avoid that. It's a big buck in the Lord. I love you enough to do it right. But I'm not going to dismantle, it, dismantle God's witness Amen. just because I say I love you. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to do that. So guess what? We're not going to do this, 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 and this. Why? I love God. I got a revelation of God's love for me, and, and that causes me to love myself, and it causes me to love you right. But I won't dismantle God's dignity and his witness in your eyes. Amen. I love you that much. When you love someone, you don't pressure their flesh to show you more love than the honor they have towards God. Oh, I just love my wife, and, 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 and you're forcing her to watch porn with you. That's not love. <laughs> That's not love. That's manipulation. Amen. If you love me, you, 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 you'll take this. You'll you put this up your nose. You'll put this in your arm if you love me. No, that's manipulation. Amen. We're talking about God's love, but I tell you what, you got to know that you know that you know that. You have a revelation of God's love for you. If you don't, you start your love life off. Five plus five is 11, and everybody's manipulated. Everybody's manipulated. Everybody. I mean, do you realize? Do you even realize that in relationships? To the degree I allow you to know me, that's how much you know me. But when you have a revelation of God's love for you, put it all on the table. Here's who I am. Here's what I'm about. I'm going to tell you right now, sweetheart. I'm telling you right now. If it comes between you and God, okay, I'm a virgin. I'm not going to do this, 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 and this. Don't manipulate me. Don't, don't shame me, all that kind of stuff. Because the minute you start that, guess what? This brother right here, I love God and God loves me. I'm gone. You're not the only one on the planet. That I'm going to forfeit my honor towards God. You're not the only one on the planet. Do you hear what I'm saying? Yeah. Man, I'm telling you, God's love for us is amazing. 
I tell you what, God dang it, look at the Holy Spirit. You know, when storms are in our lives, I, I'm just in the season now. If a storm comes, let me dance in the rain. I ain't running from nothing. Jesus already overcame it. Jesus loves me. You don't run from nothing. Don't you give up. Don't you cave in and quit because God loves you enough to push you through that thing without spot, wrinkle, smell of smoke. But I tell you what, if you don't hear what I'm saying tonight, you will stay in storms. Take that storm and say, you know what? Give me some more music. Give me some more rain. Let me dance a little bit more. What? Nothing can face me when I understand God's love for me. Nothing can face you when you understand God's love for you. Amen? Let's go to, uh, where do I want to go here? Uh, let me get back on track. School night, school night. School night, Derek. School night now. So I said, who is that talking? My wife. School night, Derek. <laughs> Isaiah 54. Isaiah 54. Glory to God. In your notes, I want you to write this down. God, <clears throat> God's love is forever in my life. Think about that. God's love is forever in your life and in my life. Nothing I do, say, did accomplish, didn't accomplish, who I married, didn't marry, what I failed, what I didn't pass, nothing can take that away. Nothing can take that away. Now, I've seen some people come through some rough stuff. <laughs> and I always ask myself in ministry, how in the world are they surviving? How are they even in church? I'll tell you how. It's not their love for God. It's God's love for them. And they know it. They know it, amen? So Isaiah 54 lets us in on something. Think about this now. <clears throat> Who likes to lose in this room? That's what I thought. Just want to make sure I'm in a room full of, you know, dog goners in, up in here. 54 verse 10, Isaiah 54 verse 10. For the mountains shall depart, and the hills shall be removed. But my kindness shall not depart from thee, neither shall my covenant of peace be removed, saith the Lord that has mercy on thee. If you're ever going to get a revelation of God's love for you, you got to get a revelation of his covenant of peace. Peace that does what? Passes all understanding. Amen. And you do know your confusion is understanding. It's just confused. You do know that, right? When I'm confused, it's a form of understanding. I just, I, it's, it's not clear to me yet. When it becomes clear, I got clarity now. Amen. But when you have a, a revelation of the covenant of peace, it says, it says, when you can't figure it out, your, your, your finite mind can't seem to make it through. You can't seem to figure it out. Nothing seems to untie in your life. He said, look, my covenant of peace, it surpasses. It, it, this peace I want to give you, it, 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 it wants to surpass your understanding. In other words, God's love is so great for us. Whatever you're going through right now, whatever knots you're trying to untie right now, here's what I want you to do. Stop. And say, God, I have a revelation of your love for me. I receive your peace that surpasses all understanding. And guess what you do with the thing? Leave it alone. You ever try to leave something alone? You know, James 12, 24 says, when you sow that seed, put it in the ground and let it die. Why well, I need to let it die so it can germinate and grow back, grow fruit. But you ever, you ever, you, you ever, <laughs> you know, I just have these little thoughts coming to me. And, 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 and. And I had a thought come the other day, and I think it was a word a week or something like that. But the thought was, 
Uh, stop whispering to people what you said you turned over to God. Now, did you turn it over to God or not? Yeah, I turned it over. Well, you're still talking to folks about it. Why are you still talking about it? Amen. A peace that passes all understanding. You know, I've been in a place in my life where I, I, I just didn't have the answers. And there's nothing worse than somebody walking in pride <laughs> that won't admit they don't have all the answers. The law of leadership says that you have to have all the answers. That's a lie. No one does. No one does. I said, God, I can't figure it out. But I tell you what, I know you love me. Amen. I got a revelation of that. I know you love me. I can't figure it out. And sure enough, as soon as I take my hands off of it and take my mind off of it and stop giving it attention, the, 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 the floodgates open up. Amen. And God goes, see there, I told you. When I started this series, I felt like the enemy pulled out everything, didn't he? He pulled out everything on me, every tool he had. And it was like, whoa, 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 wait a minute now. And I, I, I didn't come to work, stayed at home, prayed, this, that, and the other. I said, oh, 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 oh. And, 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 and you can think you're so invincible until a true attack spiritually Amen. is knocking at your door. <laughs> it's knocking at your door. And it's not, and it's not being deeper spiritually. It's, it's, I know what this is. Amen. And I can remember, I can remember being in that house by myself. And I said, you know what? I just got in a dark room. I said, God, I said, here's the, here, here, here's the deal. Here's where I am. Here's what I need to see. Okay. I understand my covenant with you. I understand why Jesus died. I understand why he rose from the dead. I understand all of that. And you made these promises to me and I need to see them right now. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now I'm not here to worry my prayers because yeah. I prayed about it yesterday, but I'm back again coming what boldly. Before the throne. I'm not whining. I'm not complaining. I'm back again, yes. coming boldly before the throne. You, the amount of delayed miracles in the Bible of healing, where people, he laid hands on folks, and man, it didn't, it didn't happen. And five days later, boom, there it is. Our problem is when we don't have a revelation of God's love for us, here's what we do. We start, we stop. God, you didn't do it in 24 hours. And God is like, what? what's going on here? That's not a revelation of God's love for you. He wants to heal you. He wants to bring you out. He wants you to be employed. He wants you to be out on top. He wants your baby to be. He, 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 wants, he, 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 he wants the best for his children. So this thing is coming at me left and right. I'm talking left, right, this. Well, I wonder this. I wonder that. I don't. Where is that coming from? Where is it coming from? I'll tell you where it's coming from. This teaching right here. This teaching right here. Yes, sir. If people get a revelation of this, no more bullying from the devil. Amen. No more walking away from God. Yes, no more questioning God when something tragic happens in our life. No more of that. Somebody said, questioning God? Yeah, I did that with no understanding. Right so God, if you love me, you never would have took my mama. And God, well, I didn't take you. Yeah. What are you talking about? Yeah. What are you talking about, Derek? What are you, what are you even saying? I said, you never would have. And I couldn't even love her right. I couldn't even love my kids right. Why? I had yet to get a revelation of God's love for me. Amen. Glory to God. There's nothing like, there's nothing like getting to know your God in the day of adversity. There's nothing like getting to know, the, know your God's love for you when, 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 when you, you thoroughly and with clarity see and feel a spiritual attack against you. To say, you know what? I need to remove you. I, 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 need to, I need to get you out of this. And if you're not steeped and stewed in God's love for you, here's what some people do. They start second-guessing their life. They start second-guessing their worth. They start second-guessing, well, why am I here? Why am I even doing this? Well, why, am I, well, why am I even putting up with this? Why, why? And, and that's what he wants. But I tell you what, the minute they click over, they go, oh, wait a minute. God, you love me enough. You love me enough to give me clarity on what's going on here. Now, what in the world is going on here? What's going on here? Let me begin to show me. Begin to show me. Begin to show me. Begin to show me. He said, Derek, here's your problem. 
You think you can love people to me. You think you can love people to me. You can't love people to me. You can preach my word to them. They have to get a revelation of my love for them. They have to get a revelation of their need for me as their Savior. But you, my friend, you are not the Messiah. And here's what he told me. Yes, Stay out of people's way. Yes, sir. Stay out of their way. Well, I'm trying to help this. I'm trying to get this guy to really see what. He says, stay out of the way. You're not God. You walk in love. That's what you do. Well, I'm trying to get him to see. I'm trying. I, man, this one over here is saying that. Oh, my God. This one over here. He says, stay out of the way. You're not God. And you keep messing with stuff. And I'm trying to get people to see that I love them. And when God is doing supernatural spiritual surgery on somebody, you get yourself out of the way. Do you hear what I'm saying? And man, I almost worried myself crazy with that stuff. So man, you can't love nobody. What, what, what are you trying to do? You can't do that, Derek. Stop. Stop. What did Jesus say? If one leaves and the 99 stays, if one is lost, not leaves, go after him. But man, you've been, the last five years, you've been, you've been running after people who left. What are you doing? They don't want your God. <laughs> they don't want your God, Derek. They want your friendship. Now, give them that. That's it. But they don't want your God. They don't want to live for God like you live for God. So leave it alone because you're aggravating them. I mean, is this plain enough for you? And if you keep on messing with them, you're going to start thinking like them. Well, it really don't take up. Well, what are you even talking about? I know, I know that God loves me. I know that God loves me. You need to know that God loves you too. Jeremiah 31. Glory to God. Mm, 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 mm. God loves me so much. God loves you so much. If he's got to put distance in between what he's trying to do in your life and people you're trying to make love God, he'll do it. He'll do it. I don't believe that. Man, he's done it over and over and over and over. Amen. When I talk to powerful men of God, I talk to powerful men of God all the time. I'm like, what happened? So, so, he said, man, I, I don't know. I just, we just didn't see eye to eye on some stuff. But he's doing good over there. I'm doing good here. What happened? I'll create the distance. You going to follow God your way? You follow God your way? I got something for you to do. I got something for him to do. But the two of you can't do it together. Yes, sir. I love you all that much. Yes. Amen. Yes. And you need to know God loves you that much yes. in your sir. relationships. Yes. Thank you, sir. Don't be like I was in ministry. <laughs> My spiritual father says, won't you lose the Messiah complex, Derek? <coughs> he said, lose the Messiah complex. He said, you think you can love people more than God loves them? You think you're so special that you think you're so special that somebody won't that you lay your life down, won't take a dagger and come behind you and stab it in your back. And you paid their mortgage for six months. You sat in the hospital with them for two weeks. You did all this kind of stuff. You think you're so special that when they decide they're not going to live for God, that they won't come and, and light you up. He said, man, you, you, you're, you're in a fool's paradise. And he said, listen, here's what I want you to do. Lose the Messiah complex. Watch this. With my members. Amen. I said, my God. <laughs> I said, Jesus Christ. I said, I said, oh, my God. Jesus. What, what was he saying? Let, let, let God deal with people. But it's nothing special that you have. Let God love minister you, man. You'll stop trying to <laughs> take his place. Amen. Even with my kids, I had to stop trying to take God's place. Well, I love him. I really want the best for him. And I did. But at some point, I got to get out of the way here Amen. and let God have his way with him. Jeremiah 31, uh, uh, verse 3. The Lord has appeared of old unto me, saying, Yeah, I have, lo I have, lo I have loved thee, watch this now, with an everlasting love, not ending. Jeremiah 31, 3, and everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness, have I drawn thee. God's love should draw you to him. Amen. Amen. That's good. 
Do you hear what I'm saying? God's love for us should draw us to him. It doesn't repel us. It should draw us to him. Even in our clouded understanding, his love should draw us to him. You know, I can remember sitting in a meeting with my spiritual father, just as a minister, I think I was. And, and it was just, just talking, 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 and some people was, I mean, lighting him up. I mean, lighting him up. And I'm saying to myself, I have personally came to your house probably six months straight and handed you $1,500 from him when you was in a rough time. I have personally seen him send your family on vacations when you didn't have money to do it, personally. And you get to this point, and you pull out your dagger, and you curse him out. You call him names. You call him this. You call him that. You dog him out, him and his wife, all this kind of stuff. And I can remember saying this, hey, I, I, can, I, can, I, can, get, I, I can reach him. And I tried to reach him, and you know what they did with me? Curse me out from the head to the toe. <laughs> and I almost got scarred in ministry. I was like, wait a minute now. What kind of people are we with around here? <laughs> I mean, because I've seen the extent of love that this man gave you. I've seen it. And now we're here? I said, man, I, I don't know if I want my, I, <laughs> just let me sit in. Just let me sit in the back, get the word, and just go home. But this stuff right here is absolutely crazy. And what it was is when you don't have a revelation of God love for you, the minute I let you down, the minute I become your God and I don't do the 1500, all of a sudden I'm a hypocrite. I'm this, I'm that, the church this, the church that. Where did that even come from? Where did it come from? He said, Derek, I made a mistake. I became their God. Do you hear what I'm saying? I became their God. And you really don't know it until it happened to you. Yes, sir. A lot of people sitting at the side of my voice saying that they're saying the same thing I said. It can never, ever, ever happen to me. Amen. Ever. It won't happen to me in ministry. I tell you what, hang around long enough. Amen. You and your special sauce. <laughs> hang around long enough. Oh, yes, Why? People got to get a revelation of God's love for them. Amen. And if they don't have that in your relationship... Hang around it long enough, and you'll see. You'll see. Shoot. And please. <laughs> I was about to say, you can, just, you can just have it all, God. I, I don't want no more. There's Jeremiah 29. <clears throat> In your notes, uh, we're turning to Jeremiah 29. <clears throat> Every believer with a revelation of God's love for them understands their mental capacity, their mental capacity pales to compare to God's foreknowledge. Their mental capacity pales to compare to God's foreknowledge over their life. In other words, I don't care how smart you think you are. I don't care how smart I think I am. My mental bandwidth, my, my, I, I, I can only take so much. And God says in Jeremiah 29, 29, he's, listen, I know the thoughts Amen. that I think towards you. I know the plans that I have for you. That is, that is love so deep, which simply means you can redirect my destiny even though I missed it. Yes, Why? Because your love for me says, you know what? I know the plans that I have for you. you and God is so good to us, God will allow me to believe what I want to believe to get me where he wants to get me. Amen. That's why I bring a free moral agent. It's good and it's bad. You want to take 40 years in the wilderness? What, 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 what do you want to do? He says, I know the thoughts. I know the plans. I was talking to a, <clears throat> to a guy, and uh, I was talking to him uh, this, this past week. He said, yeah, I know this young guy, man. da 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 and uh, he's in real estate, young guy, da, 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 da. he loves the Lord, da, da, da. I'm telling you right now, he loves the Lord, gives, feeds, da, 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 da. I, th I think the guy was like 29 or, or 30 or something like that, uh, you know, 
you know, so some people can sell real estate, some people can invest in real estate. It's, it's, it's two different things. And I said, well, I said, hey, I said, where is that? He said, I was thinking over there at Impact, man. The guy's powerful. You got to hear him speak. Da, 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 da. I said, what's the guy worth? He said, I think he's worth about $38 million. I said, how old is he? He said, 28, 29, I think. But as he, as he began to list out his credentials in the community, what he was doing in his church, this, this, this. And here's, here's what he said. He said, Boy, that young man knows that God loves him. Amen. I said, why do you say that? He said, a project can't come up in the church. But he, he don't, he's trying, to, he's trying to take care of it. What is that? That's somebody who's impacted by God's love. But I tell you what else. God knows the plans and the thoughts. Right. And when you submit to that, you take shortcuts to your destiny. Amen. You take shortcuts to your dreams and your goals. <laughs> you say, God, you know what? I know you love me. I have a revelation of that. You know the thoughts, the plans, everything. So I don't want to. I don't want to get out of line with that. I submit my mental faculties, my capacity, my spiritual bandwidth. I submit it to the all omniscient, the all knowing, the omniscient one, the one who truly loved me from the foundations of the world. And guess what happens? You bypass a lot of stuff and you get to what? Your fruitful place. Do you hear what I'm saying? Do you hear what I'm saying? God loves us, man. God loves us. God loves us. God loves us. God loves us. God loves you as a parent so much. He loves you as a parent so much. Your kid can seem like they're going left. They can seem like they're going right. But God loves you so much and them so much. Listen, he'll never leave them. He'll never forsake them. And what do you do? Take your hands off. God, you got it. All loving God, you got it. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. And you know, let's write this down. God's love removes worry. God's love removes worry. God's love removes worry. God's love for us, it should remove worry. What are you worrying about? What's on your mind? What's on your heart? Who are you worrying about? God's love should remove it. Why? Because you know, you don't know what tomorrow brings. He does. <laughs> it should remove it out of the way. Hey, you, you don't know your child's plans. He does. You remember we was talking about that, uh, Boop? We, we, was like, we, we thought we were so fancy and, 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 and flawless as parents. And, and God was like, you don't know the plans. I do. He said, you don't know their thoughts. I do. You're just in the earth to manage these gifts. And make sure that the will of God is done in their lives. But you don't know the thoughts and the plans Amen. for their life. Amen. As a matter of fact, you don't know their hearts. I do. Amen. I said, my God, God, he's up. <laughs> what was he saying? I love you so much. I'm your default plan. Amen. I'm your backup plan. So when you mess up as a parent, guess what I do? I come right around and I redirect them right on course Amen. with that destiny. He says, I know the thoughts. I know the plans. I know their heart. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Glory to God. God's love for us removes worry. <clears throat> Romans chapter 8, verse uh, 35. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for thy sake, we are killed by day long, killed all day long, we are accounted as sheep for the slaughter, verse 37. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him, watch this now, that loved us. See, before you can be more than a conqueror, you got to get a revelation of God's love for you. And that lets you know, before I go into this meeting, I, I, matter of fact, before I go into this test, I really didn't study like I should have. Be 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 before I go into this business meeting, I really didn't do my homework like I should have. But here's what I do know. I'm more than a conqueror. Amen. God loves me. Amen. So although this guy here stayed up 16 hours, and God knows this is a part of my life, Lord, I receive your favor Amen. with this business deal right here. Guess what happens? I receive your love going into this meeting. And what happens? I'm more than a conqueror Amen. walking in this. See, wives are more than conquerors. Husbands work. Wives cast a check. What is that? It's more than a conqueror, right? <laughs> That's why when, when, when you get tested for uh, uh, like life insurance, they'll tell you, women live longer than men. They'll tell you that. 
actuaries, <laughs> insurance actuaries will tell you they, 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 they just live longer. So their rates are down. I'm, I remember when we got our thing, I think you were super, you was super preferred plus. I think I was preferred. I said, I said, I said, I said what in the world is preferred plus? I said, why can't I get that? He said, well, I mean, hey, the blood is the blood, brother. But they'll tell you, the, they, they live longer. They, 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 you know, they live longer. I know you don't want to hear that, but, you know, our youth is renewed like the eagle. I, I, I received that, but that's what they told us. So it should remove worry. Why? Nothing can separate us from the love of God. <clears throat> Next one. God's love removes the fear of abandonment. Boy, I needed that in my life. <laughs> oh, my God. Z, do you love me? Do you love me? Do you love me? You're you going to leave? You're going to leave? You're going to leave? You're going to do this? Hey, well, well, oh man, the divorce rate, the Christians in church, the highest divorce rate, all this kind of stuff. And all it was, I had a fear of being abandoned again. So I wasn't loving, I was clinging to. I was clingy, controlling, all this kind of stuff, manipulative, because I had no revelation that God's love should deliver me from the fear of being abandoned Amen. again. Where you say, I won't leave you, nor will I forsake you. And I said, God, you mean to tell me in this marriage I don't have true love? If I don't get this, he said, no. It's fragile. There's controlling. There's manipulation. There's, there's, there's all of these things. There's dependencies. There's codependencies. There's a financial arrangement involved. See, when you get honest before God, you really. But I tell you what, you can't get honest until you get to the table like we got to the table. <laughs> But some people start thinking, well, four kids. It just culminates. It comes to an apex. So he says, <clears throat> look at this. Glory to God. <laughs> God's love should remove the fear of abandonment. Watch this. And aloneness. Isaiah 41. I can remember just, and sometimes still, as a Christian, you manipulate, I mean, you manufacture these superficial feelings and confidence, and it's not even real. It's not even not that. I'm just trying to get her to do, go the way I want her to go. And the Holy Spirit will go, hey, hey, watch that. Stop that. Now, 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 I hope you live like this. I hope you, I hope as a believer, you live with a revelation of God's love for you to the point where he can correct you to that depth. And say, you're manipulating your husband. And you hear it clearly and go, I can't do that no more. How you're acting, you're manipulating that woman. That's God's love for you. How you're, how you're, you're saying you love him, but in actuality, you're controlling that man. What happens? No revelation of God's love for us. Our foundation is warped. So I got to do everything I can to hold on to this woman and hold on to this marriage and, and this and that. And this is my best friend and, and I, I can't do this. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to hang out with my best friend at the strip club because I'm trying to get him back in church. No, I ain't. <laughs> I'm not. I, I'm, I'm God with him. God loves him. Da, 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 da. And when he go that way, I'm going, I'm going home. It's like that song with uh, Lecrae and, and, and what, with the one with uh, uh, Lecrae and uh, Waka Flock of Flame uh, on his new album. Two sides to the game. He says, he says, he, he says, you on the yard with some killers. I'm at home with the family. It's two sides to the game. They told you about the cars, the women, and all this, but they didn't tell you about the indictments. It's two sides to the game. So when people are going this way and that way and all this kind of stuff, just know it's two sides to the game. And my side is, I'm gonna honor God. Your side is, your friend, do do, do life. But guess what? I'm at home with the fam. You just may land on the yard with some killers. There's two sides to the game. But you know what? They don't tell them that until that gavel go down. Boom! 39 years. Now, Ralph, who was, who was not cool and all this kind of stuff, is at home watching The Incredibles with his family. You're on the yard with some guys who were really that thing. There's two sides to the game. 
Isaiah 41. Get a revelation of God's love for you, and you don't have to live for nobody else. That's dangerous. Verse 10, fear not, for I am with you. We're talking about you know, God's, a revelation of God's love will, 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 will push back against the fear of abandonment, the fear of being alone. Fear not, Derek, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold thee with thy right hand of what? Not fear. Righteousness. The lowest we can fall as believers is the righteousness of God. Have you ever been scared? Now, I'm not talking about Oh, this boss is going to sting me. You know, oh, get this dog away. I'm not. I'm talking. I'm talk, have you ever been life or death scared? There's such a clarity that comes over you. That comes over you. Even in that, God says, fear not. Fear not. You heard my, my trip in Nigeria and Africa? It was, it was unbelievable. And the bottom line was this fear. It, it was like, oh, I can't. I can't. <laughs> you know, you pull up to some hotels and it's like, man, I don't like the sheets. <laughs> ooh, this carpet feels wet and moist. I, ooh, I, ooh. You know, some wives, some wives walk in and just see a, a fly on the wall. I, I can't stay in here. My God. I mean, how many rooms we got to go to? I'm trying to get to the Ferris wheel and, 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 and Hulk ride and all this kind of stuff. Please, let's find a room. But that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about he, when he says, fear not, for I am with you. When the doctor goes, sit down. And you, huh? Just, is your husband outside? Yeah, tell him to come here. I'm talking about that right there. I'm talking about when, when <laughs> I know for me, when my wife said, we need to talk. I said, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Let's, let's go. No, no, we'll wait. And um, no tears. We'll wait, Derek, and uh, we just need to talk. Uh, I just got to, we got to talk. I'm like, I kind of knew in here. <laughs> Uh-oh, <laughs> all the games are over. No more manipulating. No more none of that. I'm talking about that kind of fear. God says, in the deepest fear you can think of, I want you to fear not because I love you that much. And not just don't be in fear. He said, don't be dismayed. For I am thy God. Amen. And watch this. In your deepest fear, he says, I will strengthen you. How can you do that, God? How can you do that, God? And I've seen it happen in ministry. I've seen grown men fall out, six foot four, 275, can't eat their knees buckling, cannot even walk when the doctor came out of that that room, diagnosing their wife. Just couldn't even walk. I've seen one just rocking back and forth. Just walking. When he started praying, he said, Pastor, leave him alone. He started praying, and he got up, and he, st he lifted his hands right there. And I said, man, what in the world is going on? And he just shouted out, praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Your blood is sufficient. Amen. And he sat back down as if he never cried or fell down. He's okay where the doctor is now. I said, how did, how did he go from, how did that happen? Fear not, I will strengthen you. Amen. I'm right here with you. you but here's the thing, when we get in fear, we can't panic and text nobody. Right. You can't reach for your phone. Wow. Let me tell you the best thing to do. When you get in fear, worry, doubt, it's not going your way, I'm going to tell you the most powerful thing you can do. 
take the number one thing that distracts you and say, you know what, turn this phone off. Turn it off. Let me go in my closet. Let me just go somewhere, and I'm going to get before God. Amen. And the first thing you do is you begin to talk to God. Let him know where you're at. And be honest with him. Be honest with him. Here's where I'm, God. This thing is really, it's, 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 it's on me, God. Da, 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 da. It's on me, and here's what I'm thinking, da, 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 da. And, 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 and I need you, Lord. And, 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 and God will begin to minister to you, and you begin to pray, and you pray in the Holy Spirit, and you begin to walk around. And sometimes it's one minute, sometimes it's one hour, but you can sense the peace coming on you. You can sense the strength coming back. What is that? God's love in full operation. Saying, you know what? You thought you were abandoned. You thought you were alone, but I was right here. You just have to draw near to me, and I'm going to draw near to you. But, here, but, 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 but here's what trying to love God. So you can't, see, see, when I'm trying to get through something, my love for God don't get it. I become like Peter. I start second-guessing stuff, and I say stuff like, I don't know him. It's too hot. The pressure's too rough in here. Listen to this dialect. Listen, no, 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 no. I don't know. Y'all go ahead and do what y'all going to do. See, Peter was trying to love God. And God was like, oh, yeah, I know you're going to deny me like that. In a time of fear, in a time of pressure, Peter, it's not going to hold you, son. Yes, it is. I'm telling you it's going to hold. I'm telling you. I cut guys' ears. I cut them off for you. I did it. He says, mm, I know that. But I'm telling you right now, there's going to come a time in your life when fear visits your door. You're going to choose it over me. I came here to tell you tonight, don't choose it. Put everything down. Tell your husband you got to go for a walk. Tell your wife you got to go for a walk. Tell your parents, I can't do the homework tonight. I can't do it. Well, why? I got to get before God. And when you hear that as a parent, your child say that, you better get a straight A. You better say, you know what? You'll get a straight A. God will make up the time. Did you just say you need to go pray? Go pray, baby. Because when I'm not around you, that's what you're going to need. Wise parents teach their kids how to live without them, too. Amen? So he says, look, fear not. And I'm telling you, what's on your mind tonight? What are you covering up? What are you, what are you pancaking over in your life? What are you covering up? I'm telling you, fear not. Let God strengthen you. Let his love strengthen you. Why? You're not alone. You're not abandoned. Some people are single in this room, and you think you're alone. Let me tell you something. Here's what I say. Be single and powerful. Be single and have a revelation of God's love for you. And I promise you, you won't be a desperate dater. You'll be a wise waiter. When you got a revelation of God's love for you, you know he, he's only going to bring the best to me. And this sister come around here flim flamming and flipping and dipping and winding and all this kind of stuff. And we got to, uh, this, this ain't God. This ain't God. This ain't God. This ain't God. Why? Why? Because I have a revelation of God's love for me. He brings good into my life. I don't think we should, I don't think we should really be given to the church like that. I don't think we should, I don't think it takes all that with God. Ho, 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 ho. God only brings good into my life. He does not bring divisiveness from his covenant and me. He don't do that now. So what are you up to, lady? What are you up to, dude? Why? This ain't God. God loves me enough to, to and I'm going to tell you something. God's love will illuminate your eyes, and you got to have discipline enough to see what you see. Amen. Stand up, Mike. My spiritual father said one time, he said, Derek, he says, see what you see, son. I said, I like the little servant. Where, where, where are you at, man? Eric, what do you see? He said, no, see what you see. You don't want to see it. See it. He says, you see that? He said, that's who they are. Appreciate it, Mike. He said, that's who they are. You don't want to see it. That's who they are. I said, nah, I just feel like, you know, I just, yeah. he said, no, 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 no. We still love them, but that's who they are. And you don't like it. You think you can change it? That's who they are. It wasn't nothing bad. It's just, I'm going to do it this way. I said, okay. Okay. Hey. Man. <laughs> what was it? Trying to replace God's love. God still loves them. They're just doing it this way. Get your tail out of the way and see what your eyes see. Sometimes when you're dating, you can't see that. If Marviante walks in the house, and I say, who is that out there? Come on, Dad. Don't, don't. Come on now. 
I ain't no come on. See, that right there tells me, oh, this thing went on the wrong foot. It's already on the wrong foot. Come on, come on, Dad. Don't, don't, don't. Yeah, come on now. You know, I'm a grown man. I can kind of, you know, I, I see this for myself. No, no I'm, just, I'm just saying. Why? What? She can't come in the house? Well, no, I, told her I ain't wanted to come around you because I just know you. I just know your mom going to ask all these questions. I don't want to around you. I don't. It's, it, what he's saying is, what he's saying is, let me, let me corner her with my love. But if she walk in that house, she may encounter God's love for her when I tell her, hey, did you know this about him? No, he, Marvin, you didn't tell me that. Marvin, you didn't tell me. Oh, he, he didn't tell you that? What is that? Even as a parent, God's love for that young lady, it trumps this relationship. Because whatever God pokes spiritually, it's going to come out. Why? His love for her too. So a lot of times we think our kids are the only ones whose lives can get messed up by somebody else. Not realizing that somebody else on the other end, as a Christian believing, faith talking, praying, giving person, is looking at our kids saying, ooh, my God. You see the way that my girl's mouth feels? Man, what kind of house she come out of? Woof, woof. And we don't see it, but they see it. God love is it's, it's, it's for everybody. Hey, it, 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 it's for everybody. Amen. It's for everybody. It's for everybody, man. I'm telling you right now, he never leaves us, nor, nor does he forsake us. <clears throat> In your notes, God's love summons the soul. Summons the soul when it's loud. The book of Psalms, the book of Psalms talks about the quieting of a soul. God's love will summon that soul when it's loud. See, I tell you when your soul can get loud, when you, when you, when something is going on with you and you can't get to it. If a, if a wasp stings you, you can, you can get to that. But God forbid... There's a, there's a wheezing in your breathing. There's a shortness of breath. There's a pain in the chest and all this kind of stuff. Really can't just put no cortisone on that. And what happens? You go to WebMD on Google. That's the first mistake. Put it in. And really, your mind... Your mind, if it's not anchored in God, starts making up symptoms. Amen. It starts digging for them. Not two days ago, I, I could have swore. And this thing said, okay, man, what's going on? And that soul gets louder and louder and louder and louder and louder. And next thing you know, it's like, man, I, man, I got six weeks to live. <laughs> but God's love and a revelation of it should quiet that soul. Go, shh, 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 shh. Some people are professional at the emergency room. I mean, they, they, oh, it's like, my gosh, you're going to the emergency room already? And, and what it is, the soul is loud. It's, it's, it's just barking. You know, people who, are, people who are afraid not to be liked can have some loud souls, buddy. They're, 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 when you're afraid not to be liked or accepted, your soul gets real loud. And you start doing stuff and making sure everything's okay, and making sure this, and, and it's like, man, what, what, what are you doing? Your soul is, is, is so loud, and God's love says, listen, listen, ho, ho, ho. Calm down. Stop chasing feathers in the wind. I love you. See, I know the greatest craving of every human being is to be accepted. I know that. But a wrong balance of that, you chase relationships. You want to make sure, okay, I'm perfect in your eyes. Okay, good, 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 good. I'm perfect in your eyes. Good, 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 good. Oh, I'm perfect in your eyes too. Good, good, good. How many people know you can't lead like that? What do you do? Lead with God as the constant. What's that? God is love. And sometimes in love, man, I got some rough rough directions and instructions. 
But I look back on it today, I thank God for it. My Lord, I'd have ran myself crazy trying to. Who was it? Abraham Lincoln said, if, the, 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 if you want to be a failure, try to please everybody. You can't do it. I used to sit in meetings and hear my pastor say that, and I'd say to myself, watch how perfect I am towards this person. <laughs> you guys failed. <laughs> you just didn't know how to handle it. Watch how perfect I am towards this person. Watch, watch me. Watch me now. And go right in there and get cursed out. <laughs> or go right in there and mess something up. Push them further away from God. Push them further away from God. Messing something up. And I'll never forget. He said, he, he said I'll tell you what. You got to figure it out. You handle this one. I said, I can't handle that one. I'm not equipped to handle that. He said, oh, you're not. You're not. So you wanted me to rush and do it. But here, here's what you don't know. You don't know the other three things that's involved with this. That could blow up in your face. Amen. You don't know that, do you? You got your one little piece, Derek. But I know that God loves me. I know that God loves him. And I'm telling you, back off and let God do his supernatural work. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Are you still out there? Yes. Glory to God. Psalms 27. Real quick. Two minutes. Just two. Psalms 27. I'm telling you, man, just if God is love, we should walk in love. We should be love. We should exemplify love. And that love doesn't taint God's witness. Psalms 27, verse 10. Watch this now. When my mother, when my father <laughs> and my mom forsake me, Watch this. See, David was tough. David understood. I'm not alone. Then will the Lord take me up. Teach me the way, O Lord. Watch this. Lead me in plain path because of my enemies. Deliver me not unto the will of mine enemies. For false witnesses are risen up against me, and such as, such as uh, 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 breathe out of cruelty. Watch this, verse 13. I had, f <laughs> I had fainted. Unless I had believed to see God's love. Where? Right here on earth. You know what they're saying? What enemies do you have? What, 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 what? Is it a co-worker? Is it a business partner? What it is? God is like, hey, man, uh, listen, let the goodness of the Lord take you out of this. Let my love take you out of this. And when God's love gets a hold of you, you let, you let go of your enemies. Amen. You let them go. You let them go. You let them go. Why? Because, you know why I let mine go? Because I know God first loved me in my mess, Amen. in my confusion, in my own ideas about God and about heaven and about Christian and about church. He came to me and he first loved me. That's the arrangement of the relationship. Amen. I needed a savior. He didn't need Derek. Derek had to choose to follow Christ. Derek had to confess and believe in his heart to do that. But God says, look, I chose you first. Matter of fact, I had a conversation with you in your mother's womb. What are we, what are we talking about, God? I told you that you was going to be a prophet to the nations. All of you. I told you you're going to have some influence in the earth. Now, we talked about it. Well, they, everybody's coming against me, God. I got enemies over here. I got enemies over here. I got them everywhere. And God goes, let the goodness of the Lord Amen. in the land of the living deal with that. Amen. Let, let my goodness in your life deal with that. True. Why? Because when you get a revelation of how lost you were and how my love brought you out, you will let them go. Let them go, Derek. Let them go. So any enemy that you have, yeah. Yeah. I'm telling you how to handle it. Get a revelation. God's goodness for your life. Here's what you'll realize. It's not even worth it. Me having a problem with them keeping them away from God, it's not even worth it to me. Let me tell you when people get a revelation of God's love, when you demonstrate it. That's when, that's, 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 that's when you start ministering. Man, you, you going to do what? Yeah. Yeah, go over there and pay the mortgage twice, t two months worth. I don't care how mad you think you are somebody. 
The one thing after that transaction, after that blessing in their life, after that, something happens in their heart. See, nobody can come to me. Anybody in this room that's ever brought good into my life, nobody can come to me and say it wasn't real. Why? Goodness and God's love, it holds equity Amen. in people's hearts. Amen. Yes, sir. And they may be going crazy now, but here's what I know, and I've seen it enough. The goodness of the Lord comes around. They start, they start getting to remembrance and go, wait a minute. Why did I believe you on that? Why? I got a history of God's love being demonstrated to me Amen. by this man right here, by these people right here. And sometimes stuff go crazy, this, that, and the other. But here's the bottom line. The goodness of the Lord, it's going to bubble up. Amen. It's going to bubble up. Amen. Amen. I'm going to reach this last thing and we're out of here. We're out of here. We're out of here. We're out of here like last year. We're out of here like last year. Somebody said, why are you screaming? I don't, I don't like to scream. You know, some guys that meet screaming women, that you, you oof, loud and screaming all the time, like, oh, gosh. Oof, Jesus. We're going to get into it, you know, the 20s, dealing with the 20s. <clears throat> the young adults, I'm telling one thing. One thing you watch is their mouth and how they respond to pressure. If they go off on everybody, they're going off on you too. <laughs> I'm going to leave this last thing. This is for married folks and those that want to be married or whatever it is. I'm going to leave this last thought that I feel will carry your marriage into the next dimension of love. When communicating with your spouse, when communicating with your spouse, if you're going to have like an over-the-top marriage where everybody's just cool and we're just, you know, we're just living life and building life together, when communicating with your spouse, don't confuse their voicing of preference with being disagreeable. When communicating with your spouse, don't confuse their voicing of their preference with being disagreeable with you. I said, hey, you got, the, uh, you got everything booked uh, for, our, for, our, for our getaway? Uh, yeah, Derek. What do you mean? Yeah, Derek. What, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? Well, you wanted this, you wanted that, and you wanted this, and, um, you know, but uh, I would like to, you know, I think it would be better if we do this. There, there you go. Got to. We can't even, you're disagreeing with me. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. I'm just voicing my preference. I'm not being disagreeable. We're still on one accord. As God is the cornerstone in our life, we're just, we're just not preferring this thing together. In any relationship, don't confuse the voicing of preference with somebody being disagreeing with you all the time. <laughs> hey, we're going to go over here to Chipotle's and we're going to hang out. We're just going to sit and hang out. Right after that, we're going to go to Starbucks, sit down and get some coffee. Da, 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 da. Coffee? I'd rather get mochis, guys. Oh, gosh, she's so difficult. What, what? <laughs> Why is she so difficult? She voiced a preference. She's going. But when you're insecure over here, why do you disagree with everything? Why do you mean disagree? Why? I'm not disagreeing. I'm just voicing my preference. I'm still going with you. You follow what I'm saying? Yeah. So if you're going to live a happy married life in the communication world, know this. Your spouse, see, I get nervous when my wife agrees with everything. That, that's not even human. That's not even humanly possible. That's not even, you know, that, that, it, it, something is wrong here. You know, it's control or she's afraid to voice. I, I don't like that. Why? Because a muzzled mouth and soul can only stay unexpressed for so long. Except they're not going to be talking about mochis and coffee and everything. When it, when it comes out, they're going to be talking about, I'm going to have a life, just not with you. <laughs> well, you're blessed by the word of God. <laughs> Let's stand to our feet. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let me get my prayer counselors down front. Woo. I'll pick this thing up next week. Let me mark my notes here. If you want to be born again, come on. If you want to rededicate your life, come on. If you want to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence speaking in tongues, come on. And if God's called you to join his church, come on. If you need special prayer, come down. And uh, the people in the prayer room want to pray with you. And a lot of times... 
Believers are afraid of special prayer. I, I don't even understand that.